now, from the makers of Coldwater Omo... Firing party! No, 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 please, please, I... Firing party! Ah, I can explain it! Okay. No, no, no! Fire! John Steed and Jimmy Merlin, handcuffed together, were in the street outside. They heard the shots from the deserted garage and ran towards it. When they arrived, the doors of the garage were wide open. On the floor lay the body of John Cartney. Well, he won't be able to tell us what it's all about, Merlin. Yeah, Steed, look, look, tied round his neck, a chunk of cardboard. Yes, and on it written one word, looter. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. Because it gets out the worst dirt and stains. Mrs. Francis of Port Elizabeth found that Omo cleaned her husband's bathing trunks. He used to come home and they'd be marked and splodged with tar and uh, oil from our beach. Well, he wanted to throw them away. So I said, well, he'd soak them over now some cold water Omo. And the next day they were shimmering white again. Cold water Omo cleans best. Over a million South African housewives have proved it. What's in the war's ice cream freezer today? I say. Wow, wafer. What are what's inside? Wow. Creamy strawberry and vanilla ice stuck together with munchy wafers. Wow's wow wafer. Wow. <laughs> of this story in which John Steed tenaciously clings to treacherous Jimmy Merlin and tries to find out just what is going on the morning after. The effects of the sleeping gas wore off as the morning wore on. But John Steed still couldn't make sense of what was happening in the market town of St. Catharines. He'd found the whole place quite deserted apart from the sounds of marching feet and one elusive radio van. In fact, the first person he and Jimmy Merlin saw that day was a dead man. Shot for looting. Doesn't make sense. Mm, nothing does this morning. I knew I was sorely tempted back there in the bank. Is that the reason you tried to jump me and get away, Merlin? The sight of that open safe? Not really, Steed. I play for far bigger stakes than could be held in a town bank. You're not going to be playing for any kind of stakes in future. You're going inside a well-guarded jail if it's the last thing I do. Oh, careful, old boy. It could turn out that way. Don't try anything. I wish I could think of something to try. But back to the subject in hand. What about him, the dead man? Well, let's examine the body. Why is it so important to find out who he is? You'll never know. Want to send flowers to his widow or something? Just shut up and cooperate for once. Come on, let's go through his pockets. Steed and Merlin knelt by the body and carefully searched its clothing. Steed found a wallet. Hmm. This says Harold Thomas Cartney for Lymington Crescent Ipswich. Cartney. Harold Cartney. Now, that seems to ring a bell. The only bell it rings to me is an alarm bell. Look, Steed. Neither of us knows what's going on in this desolate place, but we do know that people are shooting each other. One person has been shot. So far. But when people start shooting at each other, that's when Mrs. Merlin's youngest son, Jimmy, starts getting out. All in good time. I want to find out why it's all going on. Does it matter why? I think it matters very much indeed. Well, nothing more to be found out from Mr. Harold Thomas Cartney. Come on, let's go. Now, that's better. 
back to your car, turn it round and head on back to London. If there's no one there, I'll know I've gone mad. Uh, not back to London. Uh, Steve, you obviously like dicing with death more than I do. Now, let's be sensible. Either we make a complete break and get back and away from all this, or we sit tight in this garage until the whole wretched business sorts itself out. We are not running away. Well, then let's stay here. It'll be safer to sit tight here and... I agree. It would be infinitely safer. Well, then. But we are leaving right now. But, but why? Where to, Steve? Emma Peel. Do you remember, Mrs. Peel? You said that you particularly admired my choice of partner. Now, the lovely creature you turned your oily charms upon before you busted that capsule that knocked us all out. Ah, yes. Mrs. Peel. Uh, presumably, she's still sleeping it off. Presumably. But when she wakes, she's going to be alone and very, very vulnerable. So, no more talk. Come on. Steed dragged the protesting Merlin from the garage and into the silent streets. While this was going on, a small squad of soldiers marched down a street on the other side of the town. At the head of them was Sergeant Hearn, the man in charge of the firing squad. He halted his men outside a large, imposing building. Halt! Sergeant Hearn made his way through a yard of parked army trucks, passing a plaque that read... Eastern Hemisphere Trade Commission, and pushing open a door that bore the symbol of the skull and crossbones and a warning of radioactivity. He made his way down to a deep cellar. The normally dim, dank steps were illuminated by brilliant lights. A collection of about half a dozen army officers and warrant officers, all wearing protective clothing, gathered round a focal point at the far end of the cellar. They were working on a gleaming mass of scientific apparatus. Uh, probably. Like a yeah, let me see those equations. Yes, sir. <clears throat> the brigadier, standing in a position of prominence befitting his authority, studied the clipboard that was handed to him. Major Parsons, standing stiffly at his side, noticed Hearn descending the steps. He moved over to him. Well, Sergeant? All quiet on top, sir. Good, good. Any problems? Uh, one, sir. A report. Was it serious? What occurred? Oh, don't worry, sir. We dealt with him. No fuss, sir. What's this? What's wrong? Sir, Sergeant Hearn. Uh, we ran into a spot of bother up top, sir. Report, Sergeant. Sir, while carrying out a street surveillance, we ran across an unauthorized person in the area. I arrested him and summarily dealt with him according to my orders, sir. I shot him as a looter. Who was he? Sir? It was a man you shot. Didn't you get his identity? Uh, well, no, sir. Well, then do so! Yes, sir. Right away, Sergeant, right away. Sir. Hmm. Nobody stayed on in this area without good reason. I want to know why and who. The supplies to everyone found up top. See that that order is carried out, Major, at once. Some while after that, Steed and Jimmy Merlin were cautiously making their way back to the Poston Trading Company, where they hoped to find Mrs. Peel still sleeping. Nothing so far. Yeah. Got to be careful. Hey, you know, Steve, this is darn ridiculous. What are we doing snooping about like a couple of Boy Scouts on tracking practice? Being prepared isn't a bad motto in these circumstances. I wonder who this can be. It was Sergeant Hearn on his way back to the garage. Quick, up the steps into the bank. Steve and Merlin scuttled up the steps of the bank they had previously visited. Inside, they made their way to the rear door. Too bad. It was locked. We've got to get out of here. Too bad. Too late. Hold it. Stay where you are. Right. Taking advantage of the emergency, eh? Emergency? Made a break from somewhere, have you? Right, forward, men. Cover them. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Um, perhaps if you could just explain what all this is about. Uh... Silence. Well, surely at least tell us what's happened and then... And this, us up... If this man speaks again, shoot him. Stop! Orders are that anyone found within the area shall be searched. The brigadier wants a complete check. Right, now let's see what you've got in your pockets. Hearn began searching the two men. On Jimmy Merlin, he found nothing. On Steed, two wallets. Hmm. John Steed and Harold Cardney. Now, which are you? John Steed. Silence. Oh, you took this from the dead man back there in the garage, didn't you? Didn't you? Matter of fact, old chap, yes. You see, I'm attached Looting. to... Looting. Both of you. What's your name? 
Merlin. Now, look here, Sarge. I, I've had nothing to do with this. Nothing whatsoever. You see, this man, Steve... You he... have both been found guilty of looting. Guilty? I, I, I didn't see a judge. I am the judge. The sentence is death. It will be carried out immediately. I see. He means it, Steve. He really means it. Firing party will take up position. Yes, sir. Oh, no, we can't let this happen, no. Handcuffs can be useful for other things than holding people together, you know. Right, silence. Right, firing squad. Now, I think, Steve. Right. Oh. As one man, Steed and Merlin, leapt forward, they dropped their handcuffs over the sergeant's neck, pulling him back in front of them and nearly strangling him in the process. Right. Drop those rifles. Tell them, sergeant. Tell them we mean business. Tell them, sergeant. Do, do, do as he says. Right. Stand clear. Come on, Merlin. Right. The door. Steed and Merlin moved off to the doors, dragging the sergeant between them. When they reached them, they roughly shoved him back into the bank. He sprawled on the floor as they slammed the doors closed and ran towards the armored car. Steed started her up, and they roared off. A burst of shooting from the troopers followed them. Sake, let's get out of here. We can make it easily enough. Those, those men were trying to kill us. But they didn't, though. I don't find that encouraging. Well, Steve, let me off the hook. Undo these blasted handcuffs and let me take my chance alone. Warden, hear it, my dear chap. They're after us. I'm too young to die. You're over 21. If I were over 80, I'd feel the same. Steve, where are we going? We're sneaking back. Sneaking back? Give me three good reasons why. One, Mrs. Peel is still there. Two, I want to know what's going on. I said three reasons. The third one? A terribly obstinate man, how's that? It's not good enough. They were the British Army. The sergeant and that firing squad. They were the British Army. And he mentioned a state of emergency. Houses empty, cars abandoned, martial law, it all fits. Now, I'm not moving out of St. Catherine's until I find out what sort of emergency. You got that? Understand? If they don't kill me, you will, with careless driving. I promise, Mother, if I ever get out of this alive, I'm going straight. And that's a promise I've never made before. gives you a lot of pleasure. Now here's something you must do for him. Give him all new Procos health food for dogs. It's complete. New Procos contains all the energy-giving vitamins and protein a healthy dog needs. So with new Procos, you need feed him nothing else. New Procos health food is all he needs. Care for your dog. Give him new Procos health food for dogs. It's complete and he'll love it. There's no dirt that can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water Omo. If you use cold water Omo, it comes out very, very easily indeed. Says Mrs. Sutherland of the Inneken. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. It cleans best. The Avengers. <laughs> Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omo. <laughs>